This is a great question. How often do you move your crypto off exchange in your ledger? I have a hard time doing this because of the transfer fees, especially from doing a cheap test. So here's the thing. Uh, lately, I've been doing a lot better. Just like I've gotten better at, I was really good at buying the dip. Great, right? And then I was like, maybe I shouldn't buy every dip because in a bear market, sometimes that's not the great idea. And I got a lot better at taking profits. Pretty good, actually. And now I'm getting a lot better because of all these screw-ups that are going on with these platforms of I usually dollar cost average and transferring things up the exchanges into my ledger. And of course, I keep two backups for my ledger with my mnemonic phrase. One is in a safety deposit box and one is in my house. And uh, I use this thing called uh, Stonebook. Link in the description. It's not fireproof, but it's waterproof. It doesn't smudge and it lasts the test of time. Very good stuff. So uh, I'm getting a lot better at that. So it's like every week I'll do that. Like it's just, it's almost like clearing out my emails or, you know, sweeping the, the, the porch. Uh, that's what I do now. And I think it's helped me a lot. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't take that 3% off of uh, Celsius. So I'm going to probably, I might lose that, but I didn't lose, you know, 100%. Jeez Louise. Jungle Inc., where'd you go? When are you, celebrity. When are you going to resume DCA? I'm having a hard time buying this dip with both the Fed this week and so uh, No, you're not overthinking it. So I did a video last, last week sometime, Sunday or Monday, and I said the CPI numbers come out on Friday. I'm going to hold off until those numbers come out because I don't see inflation going down. I didn't. So I said there's one or two things that could happen. I could be wrong, wrong a lot. So if the CPI numbers are good and they are gone down, then at 8.30 Eastern time, I'll just take all the money that I usually spend and just uh, buy my, my whole DCA right there as soon as the CPI numbers come out. But if I'm right, I'll wait a couple hours and wait for the CPI numbers. To, if it's super hot, which it did come out hot, I'll wait for the market to drop, which it did. And I bought a little bit, but not as much as I should because I thought to myself, okay, well, genius if the CPI numbers are hot, what's the Fed going to do? Well, the Fed, I think, are going to go up more than half a point. And if that's the case, then the market isn't priced in. I don't even think half a point's priced in personally. So I'm like, why don't you just wait some more? So I waited some more. Glad I did. Now here we are. Is that the optimal thing to do? No, it's just guessing. But uh, I'm going to wait for those numbers to come out. And if I'm right, we're going to get some pretty cheap crypto. And that's really what it comes down to. All right. Yeah, stay away from DAI. I don't use die. I use USDC. I hate Tether. I, just don't, I don't hate Tether. It's a strong word. I just don't like Tether. And that's where we're at. I like USDC. That's just me. Do you think 90% of these altcoins will be legislated into oblivion someday? Perhaps. Uh, but remember, there's probably going to be that refractory period when it, when it comes out and they say, okay, you're a, you're a security or not a security. You're a security. And then they have to come before the SEC and then register and pay all these, these things. And who knows how big the fines are. I know EOS got registered as a, you know, they said it was security. They raised billions of dollars and they paid like, I don't know, 90 million. If that's the cost of it, I'm okay with that. I don't have 90 million though. Where do you see the bottom? I don't know. It's, I can't even predict it. I don't have a uh, crystal ball. <laughs> Two looks, but some of David Allen, it's been a while. Yes, it has. Whew. It's been some days, my man. It's been some days. Burn it all to ash. Yeah, burn scorch earth theory. Yeah. So, that's his, so Coffee says, Dan just wondered your thoughts on 2022. I think 2022 is a wash, honestly. And that's it. Uh, 2022 will be downside for the rest of the year. 2023 will be flat. Let me just show you this. I mean, that's this. I think 2022 is flat, or 2022 is gone. It drops off a little bit. In 2023, I think we see some little gains here and there, but we don't hit all-time highs. And then 2024, we have a halving, and then we got to wait. But here's the thing. If some of you are thinking, damn it, I wanted to be rich, well, you're not, and that's just how it is. That's how investing works. I'm sorry. But if you've got a, a three, five, 10-year horizon view, 
this is looking pretty good. You're like, holy smokes. Like, I don't know what you do, but in 2017, I was having, I was having some troubles. Now, 20, eh, 2018, I was having some troubles with uh, one of my companies. And uh, I was like, well, I could really use this crypto money. It didn't work out like that, but it's okay because then I was able to focus on the business. I was able to raise capital. I was able to DCA for three years, essentially. And it worked out great. Sometimes the things we want are not the things that we need. And that's just the truth. Yeah, all right. <laughs> jerky, jerky. Rob, what would you do in my steps? Bought 2010 for 10 cents. Wow, a Bitcoin. Still holds a great amount in Bitcoin around 50 wallets. Probably my stable coin bag is very big, but no trust. What would you do? I don't have trust either, man. Right now, keep it on my ledger. Nobody has the right anymore to take any of our crypto. We should all be holding it. Because, Bajorki, I mean, if I tell you anything, like right now is like the worst time of all time. To my knowledge, no one has cracked a ledger. Well, I mean, public information because of their servers, but that wasn't uh, your crypto. So, but I mean, heck, my email was just hacked like three or four weeks ago. So, but I'm okay with that because that's just normal. But as long as, uh, you know, my ledger is okay and my crypto is okay, I'm pretty good. So, Jerky, I will just say be safe, my man. That's the big thing. Uh, Coinbase making you whitelist your addresses. I can see why. <laughs> Bitcoin taking away. I don't know, man. Uh, so Chip says, Rob, I've been DCAing for a little while. In your opinion, is it better to pause DCA and wait for it to level out? S there's two ways of thinking about it. Some people will say, this is it. This is, uh, and this is why we DCA. Cause you never know. Like as much as I talk, let me put this out. Let me stop this banner. It's annoying. As, as much as I put it out where I'm like, this is where I think things are going. Here's the information. I have never short of surprise in the short term of what happens with the market. Sometimes it does the exact opposite of what I think it's going to do. That's just normal. So if you think like, eh, maybe a dad can't bounce or maybe it just turns around, maybe we go to all time highs, then it's up to you to say, I don't think so. Me personally, Chip, if it's me, my bag, I'm holding on. I'm holding on to those CPI numbers come up and then uh, I'll see how far down it goes. I mean, if it goes to like, if Bitcoin goes to 20K, I'll be buying and I'll just go from there. But could it go even lower than that? No, it's hard to say. But I don't focus too much on those numbers. I focus on what's going to happen in 2023. 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027. What are we? Well, historically, we'll probably be a lot better off than where we were last couple of years. So just saying. You're in the long haul. That's great, Doms. Be in the long haul. I think that's the only way to, to, to make it work. I've seen so many super smart people do super dumb things. See, that's the difference between me and people. Like, I know I'm not that smart. So I, that's why I'm just like, I just want to be safe and uh, do the tried and true things that actually work. Oh, Sam. Hey, Dan, seeing a rain street in Austin. Hope you had fun. Yeah, Sam. I, I met a couple of different people. Very nice. Very nice people. Took some pictures. Post it and tag me. We'll see. It was good to meet people, that's for sure. 50% underwater. That's not bad. I was about 80% underwater in 2018. <laughs> I just made a code that all my kids and crack. They're like escape rooms. Uh, do you think Celsius was a tax were founded? Whether they were founded or not, you have to withstand those tests. There's a reason why they have those hackathons for those projects to see if people can hack them. And if they're hacked and things go down, that lets them know, hey, we're not strong enough. That's what it is. That's why you have a training camp for, for fighters. You got to, you know, bulk that up. And if you can't meet the criteria, that's on you. And uh, whether it's founded or not founded, it happened. And that's the reality. So but it's either going to happen now, it's going to happen later. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Rob, having on the show, it's super far on my portfolio. That's easy. So here's the thing. Don't forget... Uh, for Sweatcoin, that's a free app. You get free tokens. They're not even crypto, not yet. There's a link in the description. If you beat me in the steps, then I'll do your portfolio live on the, on the show. 
I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I would do, whether that be right or not. Ah, that's a good question. Jack McKenzie says, Rob, do you ever short during this time? Or is too risky? I don't short. I don't go long. I don't do any of that stuff. Just don't. And um, I just leave that to, to the people beyond me. I'm very safe. I'm very safe for my core portfolio. 95, 97% of my portfolio, I'm very safe. And it's, it's worked out pretty well for me. So I'm like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Now, there's another channel, Dan Degen, where I do like to gamble 3% or so of my portfolio. And I say, hey, these are some crazy, wacky, uh, new projects that are out there. I think they're going to do great because they make the cut. Uh, they have the cut, the C-U-T-T. The community is awesome. It's huge. The utility is strong. It makes sense. It's not a Me Too product. Uh, the team has done a lot of things in the past. They're going to do a lot of things in the future. And the tokenomics are great. They're not going to dump on me. If I, if I, if I go through the C-U-T-T and I find a good project, I talk about it. So far, I have talked about three projects on Dan DGen, and it's been six months. Three are the ones that are new. Gensukishi, Everdome, and Fame. Past that, I haven't talked about anything else. Jorky, I did. I talked about it. You said you had a bunch of Bitcoin and you had a bunch of stable coin and you were worried about it. The question I think, Jorky, would be this. Is your stable coin like the Tron stable coin or is it like the Tether stable coin or USDC stable coin? That would be the big question. And then where do you keep those stable coins? If you're keeping, if you have 50% of your portfolio and it was in Celsius and it was stable coin, you're like, well, that's stable. Yeah, but the platform wasn't, then you, then you, gotta, you gotta be safer than that. The safest play is to keep it in your ledger, not your keys, not your crypto or not your Bitcoin. So that's what I would say. Yeah, they said seven more rate hikes. I don't think seven more is even possible. And here's the thing about these rate hikes. Jay Powell, can, he can hike these rates all he wants to. That's going to affect, I mean, you know, home prices and mortgages and things like that. But it's not going to affect uh, gas and the pipeline and the uh, distribution channels. The hikes don't help with that. That is, uh, that is the supply chain issue. And they can't do much on that. Uh, so that just has to be ironed out. One of those things is, of course, that's how if China keeps locking down, then it's going to be bad. And of course, if the uh, war in Ukraine keeps happening and we can't get any weed out of there or different products, commodities, it's going to be even worse. So that's just the truth. Again, the narrative for me is not looking good. That's just me though. Master Blasher says, why do you like USDC over Tether? I'm going to tell you exactly why. Because the CEO of USDC, God, I'll, I always want to say Alistair Overeem, but Alistair Overeem is a fighter in UFC. Alistair, he's the CEO of, of Circle. And he went before Congress and he said, look, we've had an audit. Here's all our paperwork. And we're backed one-to-one -one for all the different things we have for a USDC. So if we say we have 100 USDC, we have $100 or equivalent of, uh, of dollars for our USDC. And you can see it's right here. Here's the audit. And you can take a look. And this is before Congress. That's good. With Tether, yes, they had an audit. Yes, it was by um, an accounting firm. Was out of Barbados or something like that. So I'm like, eh. And then, of course, there's been some, some holes poked in it a little bit, but, uh, but so far, it has responded, so I can't say anything negative about that. Just that with, for me, USDC, if you're going to go before Congress and go, here's all the paperwork, go have fun and look at it all, we're backed, I'm good with that. Not that, like, Congress is great or something. I'm just saying that if you have the paperwork to prove it, I'm good with that. <sighs> Eight of her soul, who's winning? Cardano. Uh, hey, Tesla, hope you're good. I try to be. Uh, honest and measure. Okay. Love you, Rob. But should we tell people sell anything at lows, buy low, hold or sell something like that? But here's the thing. Weren't we saying the exact same thing a month ago when we weren't hitting all-time highs and Bitcoin was at 40,000? Hold on. It's going to be okay. 30,000. Hold on. It's going to be okay. And then I think for, see, that's just it. Like me, I'm okay. I'm like, okay, well, I know where we're going to be in five years, so I don't really care. And, and I, I'm not affected because I have multiple streams of income coming in. And this isn't just like I work, you know, one job or something. I don't even, I don't even have a job. I, I am my job. Uh, 
real estate and online education and uh, Amazon business. So like, and then of course the sports facility. So like for these things, like I'm always having money coming in. So it's not a big deal. And I have a lot of assets and I don't have a lot of debt. So for me, I know exactly where I'm, where I stand, but for other people, like they're taking their paycheck and going, okay, you know, I'm, I can pay the mortgage and I can pay everything else. But everybody told me and Michael Saylor and everything was like, it's going to go to a million. So I'm just going to put all this away. And then like when the rainy day comes, like there's no money. And if you're struggling to meet the basics, like if you have a ton of debt on your credit card at whatever, seven, 10, 15%, or if you can't afford to put food on the table, or you can't afford to have your, you know, pay your mortgage and you're a little bit late, or even if you're not paying ahead on your mortgage, that's another thing. Uh, if you look at the amortization table uh, for your interest, I mean, every percentage point, I mean, could potentially tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if you're not paying ahead on your mortgage, I think that's a mistake too, but that's just me. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. So like, as these things start to come down, you have to ask yourself, did I overextend myself? Did I put way too much into Solana when it was $200 or did I put it too much into Dogecoin or whatever else? Maybe you did. And maybe you're like, if something happens, car engine goes out, gets super sick, family needs money, I have nothing in reserves. That's a problem. So that's where it's up to you. And there's so many different situations. I would say be careful because I don't think we're going to go up anytime soon. So just be aware of that. I know people will say, diamond hands, hold on forever. And you're going to be all right and buy that dip. And I say, you're full of it. It's what's important for you and the things that you need to do. So... Don't see it any way. So this is what Ben talks about too. He's pretty right. Midterm elections that can be a catalyst. It could be both ways, you know? Like maybe Jay Powell is sick of, <laughs> maybe he's sick of the Congress that he's got. And he's like, you know what? I don't like these Democrats in Congress. So I'm just going to keep, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, do whatever I need to do to keep the inflation high. And the Republicans come out and say, see, inflation's high. Joe Biden, he's out, and then they get in. I'm not particularly interested in any any uh, party because I think they're both incompetent. So, but you, you never can tell. Like, just because Joe Biden is the president doesn't mean that Jay Powell and the rest of the people who are on the board want him to stay in, or the people who are in power in Congress and senators. Just remember that. Yeah, Capricorn, probably the safest. Yeah, I've seen a sentiment change these eight of these days too. Remember how everybody would talk about, and even me sometimes, I would be and complain, like, ah, Cardano's very slow to, to get things going. However, sometimes a tortoise does win the race and they've never gotten rug pulled and they've never been offline. So just saying. Someone did crack a ledger. I, you know what? I saw that video. There was a video of this, of this hacker. This was because... What he did was somebody sent him their ledger and said, I've got a bunch of crypto. I forgot the, I forgot the keys. I forgot the, the code. So he ran through a bunch of tests for like weeks. And because it wasn't updated to the next uh, software upgrade, he was able to get in there and like he did a, I forgot what it was, but he was able to get into it and crack the ledger. But this was like a year ago. So yeah, I mean, you can do that. Uh, but after the upgrades, I don't know. I haven't heard of it happen yet, but it's a good point. Straightforward. Most of my stuff is on Voyager. Maybe we should move on with Bitcoin. Good. Look, I like Steve. I like the gang over there at Voyager, but you got to do what's best for you. Remember that. We're not here to marry anybody. We're here to make a buck. So do what you think is important and best for you and your family. That's all I'm saying. I will say this. Walk away from Coinbase. I will say this. Out of all the different things that have happened, uh, Coinbase has been up recently. I haven't heard of any outages. And I sure as hell hasn't heard of any kind of rug pulls. So just saying. I mean, people will still complain that, you know, the, the fees are astronomical. But Coinbase Pro is very low. And I just heard about this new uh, Coinbase One where they're going to, I think or they're going to, they're going to uh, charge us like, like $30 and like there's no fees and you get some uh, access to like individual help. And it sounds pretty good. Pay to play, I guess. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, Solana can come back. They got some pretty smart people on there. 
Where are you staking your chain link? I'm not. I should be, but I'm not. Rob, what ledger do you recommend? Ledger. It's just called Ledger. I don't even think I have a, uh, I don't even think I have a affiliate link. It's just ledger.com. Let me make sure. Sweet Mary Joseph, I don't have anybody come go the long one. Yeah. Let's go here. Let's see. Yeah. Ledger.com. L-E-D-G-E-R. Don't buy it on eBay or something crazy like that. Or Amazon. I've heard some different hacks. Just get it from here. Might cost you an extra five bucks. Better than better than the alternative. <laughs> what time frame do you prefer for shorting? I don't short. Nineteen thousand could be the bottom. Sure. So I selling it all. So I did a video like three months ago. Was it three or two months ago? And it was it, the title was "Sell in May and Go Away," and I, we talked about why that phrase is not just a phrase. It's turn, it's it's it stood up to the test of time for all different types of markets for the last fifty years, and not just the American traditional market, other markets globally. Something with the cycle, and again, I always say this, and I think I'll say it more. This time is different. It's not different. It's the same thing. So. Uh, when that sell may go away, like I sold a bunch of my alts and I told people I'm going to sell because sell may go away. I wish I would have sold a lot more in April than May. I'm just saying, but uh, right now it is what it is. So yeah. And of course, sell may go away. It doesn't mean go away forever. It means at some point you come back and usually they talk about around Halloween is something sell may go away and something creepy, something, I don't know what the phrase is. Uh, let's see. Crypto Zen, it's a good one. RSI, Relative Strength Index. None of that matters. The game is over leveraged. The money's uh, made up and fake. It is over leveraged. You are correct. <laughs> I don't know. Your 3% looks much better than my 3%. Maybe, who knows? But yeah, I'm just... Represent into Celsius. That's what it is. Again, it didn't crush me because I'm like, ah, you know. Does Rob think we're losing our coins in L? Here's the thing. I've talked to Alex many times in this channel. I don't think it's his intention to like be a master uh, thief and do rug pulls. I just think some things got ahead of that organization. And I think they're going to, if you ever want to, do anything in this world again you have to make that right because the flip side of that is you're going to get do quand which is you're going to be hauled before a jury and you know you could probably go to jail so whatever happens there i'm pretty sure they're trying to make it right for whether that be um, the inner fortitude of why they want to make it right or because of the legalities of it it doesn't matter I think they'll do as much as they can. Now, I don't think it's going to be tomorrow, but I could be wrong. Uh, I'm cautiously optimistic, we'll say. Chances of big sex, checks, sex. Centralized exchanges like Coin or Binance going under? Never can tell. Never can tell. That's why today is a great reminder. Everybody thought Celsius was, I mean, in the game was pretty rock solid. And then as time went on, they're like, maybe not so rock solid. And then, Today, it's like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't uh, put my life savings on there. So I will always, from this point on, reference this and Luna for any time people go, this time is different. Oh, yeah, kid? It's not. It's the same thing. It's just happening again, again, again. Uh, okay. Ah. Ada versus the basal fork. So we did a video on this. There's a hard fork coming out. They're on the test net as of June 2nd. I believe at the end of June, uh, the hard fork for Ada for basal comes out. And that's going to help out with, um, I know it's with transactions per second and throughput, I believe even price. So we'll see how it goes. But I think right now, I know it's not like over congested with Cardano, but have you ever tried to use Cardano for like NFTs? Super, super fast. To send anything? Super fast. It's great. And that's it. Yeah. 
do you, I don't want to say I'm convinced. I'm just saying that the optics don't look so good right now. Um, I'm not saying that they will. Again, cautiously optimistic. I'll take it. And that's why I'm not going to, I'm not going to see her in, in a pile on and say, ah, these guys, da, da, da. I always believe this is one of my downfalls too. Uh, that there's the good in people and they're trying to do the right thing at the right time. And uh, sometimes it bites me, but that's why I have those, those rules in place financially, you know, I mean, as far as like crypto. And another thing is I learned in my tons of years on this planet is uh, contracts are everything. And uh, you should always, all contracts should be <laughs> reviewed thoroughly before signing and of course, everybody should ask on a collateral to make sure that they're all on the same page. That's just my business though. All right, that's it. So look, we're going to an hour. It's way too much. I got to get out of here. Um, but I will say thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. If you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that great stuff. We'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's a better day. Remember, tomorrow's just, today's just one day in a, in a long litany of many days to come. And I think we're going to be okay as long as we don't have a short, short-term uh, perspective, keep things wide, and uh, I think we'll be all right. When in doubt, zoom out. Nothing lasts forever. All right, thanks so much, everybody. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Adios.